to a very important discussion. I mentioned to you that the khususiyah of this Arba'een, as Imam al nawi himself intended, is that it is all-encompassing. It encompasses all of the deen. It's not just like the virtues of Makkah or the virtues of the Qur'an, but it's the entire deen. And so we looked at the hadith, the, 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 the four hadith from before. Now this hadith, عن أم المؤمنين أم عبد الله عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها قالت قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من أحدث في أمرنا هذا ما ليس منه فهو رد رواه البخاري ومسلم وفي رواية لمسلم من عمل عمل ليس عليه أمرنا فهو رد So these are two hadith that Imam Nawi brings together in this silsila so even though we call it an Arba'een, there's actually more ahadith in the Arba'een, but because those extra ahadith are related to those ahadith that he had intended. Now this hadith translates as the Prophet ﷺ saying that anyone that invents something, something new, that is not from our affair, then it has been, re then it is rejected. Ma laysa minhu. That's not from our affair, from our amr. Fahuwa rad. And the second hadith is anyone that doesn't act, laysa alayhi amruna. That our affair is not over it, that it is rejected. Now that is the hadith, and both hadith together answer an important question. There's another hadith where the Prophet والسلام, said, Kullu muhdathatin bid'a, wa kullu bid'atin dalala, wa kullu dalala. Finnar. Hadith Sahih Where the Prophet ﷺ says That anyone that invents something new in Islam This is a bid'ah An innovation And kullu bid'ah dalala And every bid'ah is a dalala misguidance And every misguidance is in the fire Now Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah We have a strong view on bid'ah Believe it or not as Sunni Muslims, we do not like innovation in the religion of the Prophet ﷺ. We do not like innovation in the religion of the Prophet ﷺ. And as the Prophet ﷺ That's what it means. So now what is a bid'ah? We don't know. We look to our mashaykh. We look to the ulama of this deen. You know what a bid'ah means linguistically now? It means to invent something new. But the Prophet said, from our affair. And this becomes very important. This becomes important. Imam al nawawi himself, radiallahu anhu arda, he explains in many different places that there is a taqseem of bid'ah. Bid'at ki taqseem hai. He says there are some bid'at which are muharrama, they are haram. He says that there are some bid'at that are makruha, they are disliked. He says there are some bid'at that are mubaha. They're neither here, neither there. And he says there's some bid'at that are mustahab and there are some bid'at that are even fard or even wajib. That you have to have those bid'at. Interesting. Let's have a look at some examples. In the time of a Sadiq al-Akbar, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Khalifat Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam Abu Bakr, as Sadiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda. There was the great battle in which many Hufaz of Qur'an were martyred. Hufaz of Qur'an jo the na sahaba me se bhot sari, bhot badi tadad, jang me wo shaheed ho gaye the. So Hazrat Umar, I'm going to give you the loop of the story. It's a long story. The loop, the khulasa of it, is Hazrat Umar al Farooq radiyallahu anhu. He goes to Amir al-Mu'minin, who's at this time the Khalifa of the Muslims, and he says, Ya Abu Bakr. 
we don't have the Quran in one book form. It's written, the Quran was all written by the way. The Quran was written in different places. But mostly it was memorized. So the order of it is in the chests of men. But it's written in different places. And he says that if all the Hafaz die, maybe the tartib of the Quran may be lost. Because at that the Quran was written. But when someone was on the Eid, someone was on the Eid, it was not a book. So he said, why do we do this? That these are all the things into one collection. Now, fearing bid'ah, Hazrat Abu Bakr al-Siddiq did what? He said, I can't do something that Rasulullah did not do. I can't do it. And he was scared. So Hazrat Umar went away. This consultation, he comes back. They're convincing Hazrat Abu Bakr. Until finally, the lubbi lubab is that Hazrat Abu Bakr al-Siddiq says, Allah gave me in shirah. That actually what Umar is saying is correct. That we should compile it into a book. Now, is this not an ihtaf? Did they not do something that Rasulullah did not do? Nabi Pak Ali Salatu Salam ne Quran ko ek mushaf me jama nahi kiya tha. Lekin sahaba ne kiya. Why? Because there was a need. Now the big question is, ye jo sahaba ne kiya, kya ye sunnat ka khilaf tha ya nahi? Was what they did opposing the sunnah of the Prophet or not? If it opposes the sunnah, فَهُوَ رَدْ As the Prophet said, then it's rejected, mardud. But if it does not oppose the sunnah, then it falls under these other categories. As Imam al-Nawawi states out. Likewise, aage chale. They wanted to expand the masjid. How can we expand the masjid that the Prophet ﷺ did not do? Amir al-Mu'mineen, the, in the time of Hazrat Uthman, there's too many Muslims now. Ab kya kare? Isko hamne bara karna hai. There was a need. Is it khilaf of the sunnah of the Prophet? No. Thik hai. Isko kare. In the time of Hazrat Umar before, they, Hazrat Umar introduced two really important things. You know what they were? The second adhan of Jum'ah, or the first adhan. Ye jo pali hama azan karte hai na Jum'ah ki, Jum'ah ki do azan hai na Nabi Paak ki door mein sirf ek hi azan thi. Did you know that? In the Prophet's time, there was only one adhan for Jum'ah. This first one that we do, this was in the time of Hazrat Umar. Why? To tell people to hurry up. Aap kaam pe hai, jaldi jaldi gar jaye, ghusl kare, put some clouds on, itar on, come to the masjid. Is this khilaf of the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? Or is this aiding the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? So it's not fahuwa rad. It's not rejected. So now kullu, even the word kullu, we learn is not without exception. It's not without exception. Even though the signifier in this statement indicates towards all, we learn that there can be exceptions to this. And we learn this from whom? From the Sahaba. The Mus'haf, Arabic grammar, they say that the Bani of Arabic grammar is Hazrat Ali ibn Abi Talib and his student was, sorry? Abu al-Aswad Duwali, naam, radiallahu anhu. So anyone that has, mashallah, Ellsbury, this is what we have in Ellsbury, mashallah. Uh, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. La in shakartum la azidannakum. If you do shukr, Allah ta'ala increases you, we do shukr. So, Abu al-Aswad Duwali, apparently, it, it said, I got taught this by my teacher with the Senate, that he said to him, write kullu fa'il marfu'a. Right? This is how it begins, right? Uh, and kullu maf'ul mansub, right? That these were the first things that were ever written as the beginning of Arabic grammar. Now this study of grammar begins in this time, not in the time of the Prophet. Why? Because at that time the Arabs knew the language. There's a dictionary by the way. By the way, there's a dictionary for Pahari. You're going to love it. And it's even got different dialects. Dadial Pahari is different. Mipara is different. They got different dialects. I found one. I remember small Jumla Mu'tarza. I want, I, one day, Bara Shok, I had, Yaar, good Pahari language, we should preserve it. Because my kids, Unna Taparna, how am I going to, so I was at Saras University, 
and they have a endangered languages department. I don't know, you've probably seen it. So I went there and I spoke to them and I said, how do I preserve? I said, Mera bara dil hai ki apni ni na uski kara. So I said to them, so kis rakhani? how do you do it? Aap kaise karte hai? I should speak Urdu. Aap kaise karte hai? And he says, aapne ek dictionary banani hai. I said, chula aap chula. So I thought, forget that, right? But Alhamdulillah, I found a dictionary. Dictionary, yeah. Alhamdulillah ta'ala, right? For Pahari. Just the way our Pahari, well, my Pahari, I, I know we have different communities here. It's not written. Arabic was not written like that. The grammar. But now, because Islam spread, Islam ka intishar ki wajah se, ajam bi musulman hoge. So now how do they read the Qur'an? How? Likewise in the time of Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, Tyrant, but he did a good, a good amal, which is he realized that the Ajim can't read the Qur'an, so he put the Fatha Dhamma Kasra. Without Fatha Dhamma Kasra, how, how are you going to read the Qur'an if you don't know Arabic grammar? Agar kisi ne ho, tab bhi wo dek, dek ki wo parta hai. Right? Imagine you don't have that, how are you going to read it? These are all bid'at. Bid'at. You know the biggest bid'at that was ever done was translating the Quran from Arabic into different languages. There were huge debates. Apparently the first translation was in Farsi. Apparently the first translation. I wouldn't be surprised. Huge debates. Agarche ye baat sahi hai ki Quran ka tarjuma haqiqi maano mein kabhi bhi nahi ho sakta. Ham jo Quran ka tarjuma hota nahi na translation of Quran, we do not call it Quran. It's a translation of Quran. Quran is in the Arabic, and the secret and miracle of the Quran is in the Arabic. So, but these were bid'at, and you cannot deny them. Likewise, you have al-Maulid, big debates, big debates. Some people say milad, for example, bid'a. Fine, but then there are those who also say no, it's not a bid'ah, which is mardud. Why? Because they say the Prophet والسلام, said about Monday, this is Yawm Walid Tufihi. Monday was the day that I was born in. He gave takreem to Yawm Al Ithnain, to Monday, be yani ta'alluq wiladatihi sallallahu alayhi sallam. By virtue of his wilada, of his birth. So would, if we were to gather every Thursday or whatever it's, obviously people say, why every Thursday or why every, well it's like a dars, isn't it? I, why every after Asr? Is it a bid'ah to have a dars after Asr, is it? Did the Prophet ﷺ have a dars of Arba'een after Asr? Nabi Baka ko dars ta hadith ka after Arba'een, the lafaz is hadith. Where did you get it from? Allah calls hadith, the Quran hadith. Why do you call it hadith? What is hadith? Why do you call it what you call it? The istilahat of hadith, sahih, hasan li ghayrihi, hasan li dhatihi, da'if. Why did you get that from? Tafsir al-Quran. In the time of Hazrat Abdullah ibn Abbas it begins. And his students. And the great traditions of tafsir in Mecca. Where did this fiqh? Kitab al-Tahara, Kitab al-Salah, Kitab al-Sawm, Kitab al-Zakat, Kitab al-Hajj, Kitab al-Nikah, Kitab al-Talaq, Kitab al-Buyu' All of this Tadween al-Abwaab Yeh kaha se hai? Yeh Fiqa ki Kitab ji, Yeh Aqidah ki Kitab ji, Yeh Nahaf ki Kitab ji Where did this all come from? Nabi Paak ki Dor mein yeh sab kuch Nahi tha Lekin is all of this mardood? No, use your aqal a little bit Use your aqal now, mardood, rejected, are those bid'at that go against the sunnah of Rasulullah Like for example, like for example, how many rak'at are there of Salatul Asr that we just read? Four. Somebody says, I want to read five. Jaiz or na jaiz? Na jaiz. Why? Because, alayhi amruna, the Prophet has already given hukum here. That there's going to be what? Four. So now you can't go khilaf of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. You see the difference here? This becomes bid'ah. You have some people on, te- well they do it all year round. In Muharram, beating their chests. Wa Wa Did we do that yesterday in the majlis? 
Anybody beat their chest yesterday? Anybody sing Ma'atum? No. Why? What do we do though sometimes? When you're talking about Karbala and you're talking about Imam Hussein and the sacrifices, sometimes we begin to cry. Don't we? Why? Because we feel sad. Is that a bid'ah? No, that's the sunnah of Rasulullah Sunnah of Rasulullah to cry for Imam Hussein in the hadith when he, he comes to his wife and he has some of the, the, the dust from Karbala and he has dust in his face and he's crying and she says, where did you come from? And he says, I came from the land where they're going to kill my grandson, Imam Hussein. And he cried, alayhi salatu wasalam. He cried. So now, where the Prophet went, we went. And where the Prophet did not go, we did not go. When Hazrat Ibrahim, the Prophet's son, when he passed away, the Prophet وسلم, held him in his arm and he's crying. And he said, the tears weep over you, Ya Ibrahim. Our hearts miss you, O Ibrahim. And our weeping is rahmah from Allah. But the tongue will not say anything that, dis that disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, dis that disappoints Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, you're a Nabi and you cry. And he said, this is rahmah. This is rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did he cry when his son passed away? Yes. But did the Prophet sallallahu beat his chest? No. He didn't. So now this would be a bid'ah because we know what the sunnah of the Prophet is there. We know what he did. So now there's no room for changing that. So this is why it's an important principle to learn what is a bid'ah. That when you say the word bid'ah, be careful. Why? Because you don't want to fall into a big trap which is making halal what Allah made haram and making haram what Allah made halal. Because that's kufr. That's kufr. To make haram what Allah made halal is kufr. And so you have to be very, very careful. Very careful what you call a bid'ah and what you don't call a bid'ah. And my recommendation to most people who are not learned in Islamic studies, let's say, that if you hear someone talk about bid'ah, just say salamu alaikum and keep moving on with your life. And don't worry about those things. And don't get involved in those things. Do not involve yourself in those things. But at the same time, for educational purposes, know that there are many things that people will call bid'ah that when you truly look into them they're not bid'ah there may be bid'ah being practiced yes that we could fix yes i agree with that i agree with that like for example visiting the graves of the salihin the prophet ﷺ used to visit the shuhada of uhud this is my last point the prophet ﷺ used to visit uhud did he not he used to visit the shuhada of uhud Absolutely, he used to visit Hadith in Bukhari. He used to visit. He used to visit Baqir every Friday. And certain nights, he used to go and spend the night in Jannatul Baqir, which is a graveyard in Madinatul Manawwara. Visiting this, and this is in our madhabs. Visiting the Salihin is absolutely permitted, even recommended, because you remember your own death. The Prophet said, I used to prohibit you from visiting the graves, but now I command you, visit the graves. Because it reminds you about the hereafter. And also there's a blessing with the Salihin. There's a blessing with the Salihin. We benefit from that blessing. That's jaiz, yes? This is not a bid'ah, this is sunnah to do that. However, sometimes there are some practices that people do at these graves. Like if you go to certain graves, you'll see people making tawaf around the graves. Now, did the Prophet go to graves? Yes. Did he let us go to graves? Yes. Can we go at different times? Yes, no bid'ah. But can we do tawaf on the graves? No. Why? Because ma alayhi amruna. There's no asl from the Prophet ﷺ to do that. Whereas visiting the graves, taking blessings from the graves, how does she akhar? This is something different. But making tawaf on the graves, making sajda to the graves, tying, you know, strings. And doing all of this of candles, these sort of things, ma alayhi amruna. This is not from our deen. This is haram. These are bid'at. And so sometimes you saw some of the buzurk even, they would say people, okay, don't go. Not because they stopped people from going, but because they said, let me teach you first the adab of going. If you look at Allah Hazrat, Mawlana Ahmad Rida Khan, Al-Qadari, Rahmatullah Alayhi, in his Fatawa Ridwiya, Sharif, 
He tells us the adab of visiting the graves of the Salihin. And he said, when you enter the grave, you stand four feet away from the grave, he said. You stand on the Qibla side where the face, because when we bury our dead, we face them slightly towards the Qibla, don't we? And he said, you stand four feet away and you give your salam. You make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if, if, if it's the Salihin, then you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the blessing of their acts, of their righteousness. You make shafa'a. And he says that you give your salam and you leave. Dua is only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you stand four feet away. This is the sunnah of the Prophet Absolutely. Anything, anything in addition to this, ma alayhi amruna. And we have nothing to do with it. In our part of the world, Pakistan, India, this happens a lot. Ana bari, nahnu bari. We're free from that. Our bazul taught us the adab of visiting the graves. Now, that being said, there are some things that people do out of love and there should be no ta'an on them for that. Because love has no boundaries. Like for example, I go to my daddy's grave, my grandmother's grave, and I kiss them where the feet are. And I kiss it. Now Allah Hazrat is against this. He would say, why? Because the onlooker may think you're making sajda. So Allah Hazrat says, avoid it. I agree with that. And he's right. But sometimes out of love, somebody just, you know, my mother's grave, and they go and kiss the feet. In and of itself, is there any harj in it? No. There's no harj. But even then our buzurg said, ihtiyat. Don't just in case somebody thinks that you're making sajda, etc, etc, etc. So the idea of bid'ah is a strong one. We are not people that promote any kind of bid'ah or bid'at. Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah are anti bid'ah and we hate bid'ah. However, many of the things that we practice, people assume to be bid'ah and they are not bid'ah. Because as long as there is an asal for it, in the sunnah, like I gave this example a couple of days ago to somebody, building a madrasa. The Prophet taught, did he not? But did he build a madrasa? No. Is madrasa bid'ah? No. It's a bid'ah, but a bid'ah hasana. It's a good one. Writing all of these books, building these libraries, all of these things, using a microphone for tabligh. All of these are bid'at, but they are bid'at hasana. They are not rejecting or going against the sunnah of the Prophet We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is it clear what I said today? Does anybody have any questions on this? I should take questions on this. Because this is a bit of an issue, isn't it? Some people do make an issue out of this bid'ah. Right? And they say everything. And ठीक 
مثلاً کوئی بھی بڑا بندہ ہے وزیر ہے امیر ہے جو کچھ بھی حضور پاک نے شان تھی کوئی ساری بڑی شان تھی آسے گا لبانے ہیں یہ سمجھا نہیں آسا کوئی نہ اس نے خلاف بولنے ہیں نہ اس نے خلاف دیا آستے یہ دعا کر رہے ہیں کہ اللہ تعالیٰ انہوں کی عدایت دے آمین حضور پاک نے غلامی ان کے بیچ آمین جڑا بندہ اس طرح کام کری جڑا ہے اس نے واسطہ توبہ ہی ہے اللہ معاف کرنے لے بلکل اللہ تعالیٰ نے ترباری لہو توبہ کا سنہ سچی حضور نے غلامی جاسن تا انہوں نے گناہ ہو جاسن ما جی توبہ نہ نہ کرسن نہیں نہیں بالکل آپ کا دوسری کل بالکل ٹھیک ہے absolutely as you know میں تو ترجمہ کریش میں تو سنا and you know but I think most of you understood what what Ajisa was saying is correct that really when the the bid as as I mentioned the things that go against the sun now the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم whatever the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did not teach and it goes against what he taught عليه الصلاة والسلام and so we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to protect us and that's true nobody is above the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala جو بھی ہو بات بلکل تو سنی کل ٹھیک ہے میں داخل لاؤنا کن ٹھیک ہے کن ٹھیک نہیں لیکن جو بھی ہے جو بھی ہے پاوے کوئی امام ہو ہے پاوے کوئی وزیر ہو ہے پاوے کوئی بھی ہو ہے پاوے آپ نے والے دین ہو ہے کوئی بندہ نہیں ہونا no one's above the انبیاء علیہ السلام and the شریعہ of the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم and we ask Allah سبحانہ وتعالی for protection و آخر دعوانا الحمدللہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ علیہ سیدہ محمد و علیہ آلہ و صحبہ اجمعین الفاتحہ آمین آمین